So, um, someone called me uh, some time ago and um, said he was interested uh, in buying a particular, not necessarily a particular car, but he has two cars that uh, he's considering to buy uh, either of the two, one of them. Uh, he said um, one for the 406 with uh, I think EW7 J4 engine while uh, for the 407 with EW10 A engine you know so you know he was just uh well, he wanted to know which one to go for which one is better but then I realized he was just focusing more on the engine you know if I wasn't really care or uh, bothered about uh, the vehicle. We were just talking about the engine, you know. So uh, even while I tried to explain, he kept going back. Uh, he wants to know which engine is, is cheaper to maintain. In fact, let me just summarize it that way. You know, we wanted to know which engine is cheaper to maintain. So um, I advise and um, which I'm going to explain what I told him, you know. My advice and also not after then I think this uh, letter some other person called the different produce models you know asking similar questions so um let me just explain this because a lot of people I don't think uh, they understand when it comes to buying vehicles or choosing a car to buy when it comes to cars Focusing only on the engine is so is wrong. I'm just being plain and direct on this video on this matter. It's very wrong to just be focusing on the engine. Which one to maintain? Guys, if you don't know this, know it now. For a modern car, engine should be less your concern. It should be something that is. It should be with us. Um, is it? Is it's not even secondary. It's, it's something as in it should. It shouldn't even be bothered about what the cost of maintaining an engine when you are talking about a modern vehicle, not just Pojo. When you are interested, you have an, uh, you know, you are offered two vehicles, different models, or you have an, um, you know, two vehicles you want to choose from, or you are considering, you know, you have cars in mind, but you want to choose out of them. You consider the entire vehicle, not just the engine. When you are looking at the entire vehicle, especially when it comes to, if your concern is cost of maintenance, forget about the engine. Trust me, engine... See, engine takes, when it comes to what fails often, engine is the least. Engine is what it takes, uh, they are built to actually handle some abuse before they eventually show the sign that, you know, you are abusing them. Of the pack up. Engine don't just boom, it, it's gone, no. Compared to like automatic gearbox, the electric cars, the ECUs. Engine should be less your concern. Yes, of course, if you mess it up, it will deal with you. Some cost higher than to maintain than the others. But like I said, when you are talking about a modern vehicle, there is so much to even look at when you are looking at the entire vehicle. That will be caught taking money from you probably daily, weekly, monthly or annually. These are the things you will be looking at, not the engine that maybe may take most before uh, a part will require to be replaced on the engine. So, that, I mean, if I, I, mean, if I, if I, if I, I, I don't know, maybe I know we all have uh, different values on vehicles or we have different knowledge or some, their knowledge are limited on cars and stuff like that. I mean, if I were to choose between 406 and 407, I have to first find which one is more attractive to me. Which one do I find more attractive? <coughs> Before I even now talking about, okay, uh, if, I can only consider this second one if there's something about this one that I find more attractive 
or that interests me the most or that excites me the most, if I find that there's something there that I'm not comfortable after when I do, uh, you know, I'm doing my research or trying to make inquiries concerning uh, the vehicle, then I will not consider the second one that excites me. But what must excite me the most? So, but to choose between uh, vehicles because of which one is cheaper. These are two different vehicles, serving different purposes, different distance. The 406 will serve you something completely different from the 407. Not everybody will enjoy owning the 406. Some will look at it, ah, it's, too, it's already dated, it's an old, older vehicle, they don't want to associate with such cars that are very that old. They would rather go for something newer that have more gadgets, you know, that has uh, uh, something newer, period. Could be for business reason, for status reason, or for whatever. Or probably you have some things that the older ones will not have and you want to enjoy those things. You choose it and go for it. And then you will not consider, okay, which one will cost you more to maintain? You don't start looking at every other thing, the electric cars, the tires, even tires, because 406, for the 406, the tires are different tire sizes, while likewise the 407, so when it comes to replacing the tires, which one will cost you more to replace among the two? Same thing for the economy. The 406 and the 407, the four economy are not the same when you compare the two uh, with the different engine mo with same engine models. This one, one will consume more, one will consume more, so meaning one will cost you more. Same thing with, there's so many things, I mean, body parts. If there's one that the headlight will break, you will spend more in buying the replacing the headlight. There's one that the you know bumper if something happens to the bumper front or rear you spend more in replacing it. There's one that probably there's a particular part of the body that may not even be easily available if something happens you have an accident or an impact or it breaks or something it may be difficult. For example, people that would prefer uh, a four six uh, uh, coupe. You know, do you know they will understand what I mean? Getting another bumper that is in good condition and the cost as if you actually find it. You know, so these are the things you look at before you even come to the engine. So let the engine not be what the first thing will be looking at or be considered when you want to choose between two vehicles. If you are talking about four six versus another four six with different engine, there is a complete entirety. But you're talking about two different vehicles, two different vehicles. Yeah, they share mechanicals. In fact, the mechanicals are basically the engine itself. If you ask me, that they share some. There are some four engine in the four six that you find the four seven. But there are some engine in the four seven you not find the project four six. There are also one or two engines in Project 406 you will not find in Project 407. But when it comes to every other thing, transmission, well, you could say 4HP25. No, even transmission because the 4HP20 the, the in EW12J4 in, no, in 407, you will find it in 406. Because the 406 or EW12J4, they were all manual. So if you, if you prefer EW12J4, and you want it in 407, in 406, it means it must be manual. If you want automatic, then it has to be a 407. You know, so these are things, uh, so they are similar, different, similar, different. So like I said, they are different vehicles. So stop, stop focusing on engine when it comes to choosing a car to buy. It should be your list of worries, trust me. Where you get the headache, it won't even be the engine. I'm not saying engine will not fail. Maybe if it was abused or maybe you didn't change the timing belt on time, it may cut and damage your engine. Yeah, it can be fixed. I know it's, people will say, oh, it's damaging the van, doesn't mean damaging. Yeah, it's damaging your engine, just like it can be repaired. You know, because when you ruin your farm, your engine will not work. 
sometimes there are some cases where are your valves when the timing belt cuts the valves damage it will go beyond the valves it will damage the cylinder head sometimes it will break and hit the piston and crack it some engines, some people who watching the video will also understand they had a timing belt failure and the engine never be this it became the same after the repairs and it became it ruined eventually they had to discard the engine because of that issue you know, so timing belt can actually damage your engine and that will be the end there's some cases it can be repaired and it can as it will look as if nothing happened so engine forget it i'm not saying it shouldn't be considered but don't even put it as number one first thing to look at it's meaningless to me you know, so I'm advising people, this is how people end up buying the wrong vehicle for themselves. Not that the vehicles are wrong, but for themselves, they end up buying something that doesn't suit their need, which they eventually will find out. So there are things you should be considering, not the engine. If you can maintain EW7J4 engine, you can maintain uh, ES9J4, that's the V6, trust me. If you can maintain uh, EW10J4, you can maintain EW10A. So the idea of the cost of anyone, even the one point, if you can maintain, let me put it in a simple way for those who don't know these uh, engine models that I'm listing out. If you can maintain a 1.8 liter engine in any of these car, the two vehicles that you are looking at on the screen, if you can maintain the 1.8 liter in any of these two, you can maintain the 3.0 liter in any of these two as well. Engines. So that shouldn't be your worry. They, they don't have uh, things. Well, they don't. None of them have go or. I, I, I won't say none of them. I will say EW10 or VC doesn't have gold inside. And what usually fail in the, oh, some of these engines are just. Uh, uh, sensors electronic parts so they wear out eventually mechanical parts how they wear out the things that we are like the water pump which will serve you hundreds of thousands of kilometers even those are uh, uh, you know people do change them when they are less than hundred thousand we change the time maybe, but they actually can serve you more than that okay what now you know fuel Minor mechanical repair, brake pads, those are wearable parts. Brake disc, this, they are not even part of the engine anyway. What am I ever talking about? Yeah. So, what are the electronics? Uh, oxygen sensor, it's not even uh, part of the engine, it's actually an uh, emission system attached on the exhaust. What else? Uh, you, once in a while, you change your spark plugs. Uh, depending on engine model, every four years, so 30,000 kilometers, depending which other one. This is eight years or 100,000 kilometers or 80,000 kilometers. What else? I don't know. Thermostat, uh, well, 100,000 may fail or more than 100,000 kilometers. Start acting from. You know, so these are things, these are bits. So don't lose heart thinking that because this is V6, it has a. Uh, uh, gold inside so if that gold fails you are going to spend a uh, fortune to replace that gold you may find out that if, uh, if you own two vehicles you probably not spending anything more than you spend on the v on the on the ew10j4 or ew7j4 on your vcs trust me yeah you may spend a little on fueling the car but in terms of pass replacement you find that it's basically the same you know, it's just that people have this VCs phobia that this and that. So, um, please focus more on the condition of the vehicle, every part of the vehicle. These are what I should be focusing on, not the engine, all parts of the vehicle. Which one you how the, the how the car is at the time you are inspecting it. Then you can now check other things. You know, okay, which one consume more fuel? If you don't want power, of course, there's no need going for something powerful when you're not interested in power. 
because the more the power, the more fuel consumes. Those are things you look at. And sometimes power doesn't, it's not also enough to determine the fuel consumption. The weight can also influence the consumption, the weight of the vehicle. Same engine you find in 406 will consume less than the same engine in uh, a heavier 407. Also, the way you drive too determines how, how your car consumes fuel. If you're always pushing your RPM up and down every now and then, even when you're driving in the city, there's no need for you to speed. And you also you like to speed, be just born inside the city. When it comes to highway, that, that's when you remember that speed kills. But when you're in the city, you, you know, uh, you are the just born. It comes with your phone will go up higher, you know. So that RPM, the tachometer is always shooting up. The RPM there is going up. The more your two pedal is going down, the more fuel is going in. You know, so it's not just the size of your engine or power that or engine power that determines fuel consumption. You, your style of driving, can also determine how low or high engine your vehicle consumes fuel. You know, your brake pass too. How does it wear? Does it wear out often, or wear it takes longer time to wear out? It all depends on how you drive too. How you drive tell me how long how much you spend on your brakes braking system all the time some people every now and then they are just on their brakes even when it's not necessary you, you are driving in the city you know you don't need to push your car hard all you need to do is just step on your, on your throttle pedal a little so that you don't need to be touching your brake uh, every now and then you see people just a small short distance, they will push their car very hard inside, doing bumper to bumper, touching their brake every now and then, who almost like they are they are throttling and braking at the same time. And yet they will wonder why they are always replacing their brake pad and their brake disc. You know, same thing, other things. So style of driving matters a lot as well. I'm not saying it's the wrong thing. If if you don't mind replacing those things, hey, fire on, you know, but don't complain if you are having if you are wondering why are you always spending money on doing this or doing that because not knowing that this is what you want you are driving this way so you, you things are going to wear out faster because of the way you drive you know so these are things you have to look at now know okay what do you want which one will serve you better not your engine you know what i mean if you do more, if you want a car for more of longer distance, then go for a bigger engine. Trust me, it will serve you much better than the smaller one. Bigger engine perform not just performance; they they are they, they are less stressed. You stress them less on a longer distance than the smaller engine. Smaller engine, to you to even serve you, you have to you don't push it hard on a longer distance. You have to. The bigger engine can take. Can speed it and is built to handle it. But a smaller engine pushing it or the always on high wall all the time, it, it won't be it won't benefit it. If you must do it, then you must reduce your speed. Keep it low as low as possible to serve you. So if you're always on a long if you if you are getting looking for a car that you use more on highway or longer distance, then go for something bigger. Not necessarily something more powerful. So just look for a bigger engine. The bigger the piston circumference and the piston liners or the sleeve or the cylinder wall, the bigger the better. You know, talking about cubic capacity, all those things helps a lot. The bigger your even your crunch, all those things helps. You know, the top will pull most of the thing. You don't need high, uh, the HP in all your drive. But especially when you're highway, you know, so reduce your RPM, just use your torque. The, the bigger engines produce more torque, except this uh, newer engine that now at uh, turbocharged, uh, you know, supercharged. This is uh, a first induction engine, you know, they can produce to uh, high torque and lower RPM. But the naturally aspirated, the bigger, the better. Uh, if you are not into highway, don't travel with your car. You do it once in a while. And it, it, you want prefer the one that consumes the least. You don't need uh, buying something with a engine, a vehicle with a bigger engine is just wasting fuel. You don't need it. You know. Okay, so I hope this helps.